Chess friends, I hope you are doing well. Today, I have a very sneaky and impressive chess game that was played between Leela Chess Zero and me. Leela is the best female chess AI, and this game showcases some beautiful tactics that I employed. Additionally, I will share the chess opening ideas that led to the game's conclusion, so let's get started without wasting any time. I started the game with e4, Leela responded with e6, opting for the French defense, in this position, you have many lines to consider. Including the knight c3 move, which is quite romantic, I chose knight c3, instead of the usual knight f6 c5, or bringing out the queen to b6 to pressure the center, Leela played a different approach by moving the bishop to b4, pinning my knight, but don't worry, I pushed my pawn forward to e5, and she responded with b6, she wants to develop the bishop and play c5, with knight to d7 also being a possibility, I played bishop to d2, and at this point, many chess players might consider knight c6. The knight c6 move attacks the pawn on d4, but it is not the best move, you know what I would play. h4, sacrificing the pawn on d4, some players might think of capturing the pawn, but then I will crush them by playing bishop g5, attacking the queen and knight simultaneously, even if f6 looks good, after some exchanges, it may seem the bishop is under attack, but it doesn't matter to me because when stockfish makes a move, the sky makes noise with thunderbolts, and the earth produces fire, I will capture the knight, pinning the f6 pawn that cannot capture the bishop, and also attack your bishop. So, going back to the position, instead of playing knight c6, Leela played queen d7, after knight c3, Leela could have gone with knight e7 or captured the knight, but instead, she played a5, declaring war on the queen side, I replied to Leela, if you can declare war, then why not? I will go with h4, Leela responded with h5, thinking she could stop my pawn pushing army, but you know what? She gave me the opportunity to move my pieces to g5, where they can potentially attack the pawns and use the open diagonal. After knight e2, her bishop was under attack, but she ignored it and played bishop a6, attacking through the diagonal, you can pause the video here and try to figure out the best move I should consider in this position, the best move is playing pawn to c3, creating a pawn chain like a big army in front of the bishop, the problem for the bishop is that he will be paralyzed because of this pawn structure, after prompting you to consider bishop e7, I will play bishop g5, then, after the bishop exchanges. My knight will have sufficient advantages to attack this structure, as the bishop moves back, we have bishop g5 followed by c5, she tries to counterplay in the center, but I ignored it and played knight f4, giving Leela a question mark, should she capture the pawn or not. Capturing the pawn on d4 might look reasonable for many chess players. But after I capture the bishop and she takes d4, it will lead to an advanced structure for me, this will not create any benefits for black. That's why, instead of capturing the pawn, Leela played tactically, she knew she could make a move that would harass my king, she captured the bishop, and after my king captured, you can see that my king lost his ability to castle, after knight and rook to h3, my rook wanted to go to g3 to get the open file, where my knights could create significant pressure on black's kingside. After knight e7 was played, threatening to play long castle, I moved my knight back to attack the pawn on h5, Leela had to make a strong move, g6, to protect the pawn because she had no other options, but this g6 move provided me with the f6 square, that's why my bishop comes in, after a few moves, many chess players here might consider bishop to g7 as it looks like it can lead to bishop elimination, but I made a dominant move by playing knight to g5, this move is crucial to attack the pawn. Different types of players might think differently and consider different moves, like playing castle, taking the bishop, or playing knight f5, let me show you all the variations, playing long castle is a bad choice because your pawn is under attack, therefore, I will consider queen b3 to attack your pawn on b6, making your position very precarious. Going back to the position, instead of playing long castle, some may even consider playing knight f5, which is actually the best move to protect the pawn, you know what I would consider. Of course, you can pause the video, but I bet you cannot find the best move, the best move is knight to h7 because after you capture my pawn, 
I will capture your bishop, the point is that your bishop is gone, and after you capture my bishop, I will play knight to f6 check, forking the pieces, and the suite will be gone, you will have lost your love and the game, so, returning to the position, we discover that playing knight f5 is a precarious move, some might think of considering bishop takes bishop, which is very tricky, after the capture, the knight will be under attack, so after knight f5, I can play the crunchy move, the adventurous move, because my knight on f6 is controlling many squares, I will sacrifice my knight on the e6 square. The reason is very clear, you cannot capture it with your pawn, because f7 can come with an attack on the king and the rook. So, let me share a deep insight quote in sudden with you. I have no regrets in my life. I think that everything happens to you for a reason. The hard times that you go through build character, making you a much stronger person. After the capture happens on d4, you will see that the king has literally no squares to go to, if the rook goes to the h8 square, then I will play knight to g7 check, this attacks the knight on f5, some may consider playing knight takes knight. Which is actually a very bad move, because after all, rook comes to g8, attacking the pawn, but it does not matter because I will go for your king, rook to e3 check, and consequently, knight to h7 will come, followed by knight f6, putting pressure on the black queen, as the queen moves, rook to e8 check will arrive, followed by knight d5 and knight f6, the king dances in the club, and d5 will follow to attack the knight again, to safeguard the knight, no matter where the knight goes, d6 will come accordingly, as the king moves, queen f3 check will win the queen on the next move, again, you will lose the queen, and the game will be winning for white. So, returning to the original position, playing bishop g7 is a very bad choice because another knight can come to the g5 square and dominate black's position, that's the reason why Leela considered knight f5, as she is a very strong and beautiful chess AI, after a couple of moves, we have an exchange on c5, and knight to g5 comes on the board, at this point, many chess players might consider bishop takes bishop, but it is also a vulnerable move because the pawn can be attacked by the queen on d8. But that move is very bad because knight takes e6 can again arrive, the point is very clear, you cannot capture the knight right away because of f7. Going back to the position, some may consider playing long castle, again, queen to a4 will arrive, pinning the knight, and consequently, c4 will attack the pawn and open up the rook file, another rook can also come to the d3 square, black's position will be very vulnerable. Going back to the position, we discovered that playing bishop takes bishop is a very bad choice, that's the reason why we played queen to c7, a very good move considered by Leela Zero, here, you can pause the video and try to figure out the best move that I played in the game, 1, 2, 3 and go, the brilliant move that you might not even imagine, even grandmasters need 69 minutes to find that move, the move is knight takes d5, what a brilliant sacrifice it is, it attacks the queen. You might think my sacrifice is like Mikhail Tal's, you might consider queen to b7, not capturing the knight, you might say, hey stockfish, every sacrifice has a hidden trap and tactics, so, I will not capture your knight. Do whatever you can do. I will capture your bishop first, and after the exchange, I will play queen to a4, after the queen exchanges occur, my rook will go to the d1 square, now look, calculate this position, your king is vulnerable due to the bishop and rook attack, my rook can also join the d3 square, making the position very difficult to defend, the position will be over for you because the rook on g8 will be very passive, no one cares about the rook, the rook was adopted by black, maybe. So, going back to the position, you cannot make any queen moves, you have to accept my knight's sacrifice, you have no other choice. After that, I will capture the pawn back, many chess players again think of considering bishop takes bishop as it looks like a good move, but it's not because the e file will be wide open, after the queen comes and queen to e4 check arrives on the board, your king is under attack. Playing king to f8 will lead to checkmate after I play knight h7, so, in this position, the king has to go to the d8 square, then my rook will come to the d3 square, attacking along with this file, 
as the knight blocks it, I will capture the knight, when you capture with your queen, I will play knight takes f7, checking the king, and your queen will be under attack at the same time, you will lose the game because you lost your queen. In every chess variation, I show you how to win your opponent's queen by making brilliant tactics, if you have noticed that, you will be intelligent enough to make chess calculations in your games, you need to understand the chess tactics, how I employ them, and how opponents try to defend them, additionally, the chess PGN is under the video description, you can analyze it for your benefit. Going back to the position, we discovered that bishop capturing a bishop is a very bad choice because the e-file will be open, that's the reason why we played rook to f8 to protect the pawn from being attacked by the knight and queen, I played knight to h7, a very crunchy move to attack the rook, this is a sneaky move, and Leela 0 might consider rook to g8, then, you know what I would consider in this position. Try to think a little bit and think like stockfish, what should you play? Do not think like a beginner who sacrifices the queen or king like a 200 yellow player, the best move is pawn to e6, what a spectacular move it is. The point is that it attacks the e6 square, and after the capture, the rook is under attack and cannot go anywhere except one square, then I will easily capture the rook, winning it for a minor piece, and your king's position is very burdened. So, let me provide you a beautiful quote about life. Life is not about waiting for the storms to pass, it's about learning how to dance in the rain. So, going back to the position, we discovered that Leela cannot protect the rook, she knows it very well because she is my subscriber, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then what are you doing? Just click the red subscribe icon, after the queen moves to d7, attacking the queen, a few moves later, we have rook to d8, this is called the hedgehog turtle-like defense for black, where every piece tries to protect the black king, this game is similar to a Paul Morphy game, where he defeated a chess player with powerful opening moves, and I am defeating Leela 0 with my powerful rook moves, after queen to d5, I ignored her proposal and played queen to a4, calculate this position with me, first of all. The knight and pawn cannot move, the queen shouldn't move, and the knight on f5 is very constrained. Having limited options, the bishop cannot capture because of knight takes bishop, which will fork the pieces, the bishop cannot move because of bishop takes rook, you discover that every black piece is just paralyzed, they cannot move, even the rook on d8, if the rook moves upwards, like rook to d7, I will consider f4, forcing the queen to move back, and then knight g5 will arrive, attacking the queen, which will be trapped again, in this variation, I talked about the queen trap. Just like in previous variations, and I will continue to talk about it in future variations, I know all kinds of past, present, and future in chess because I am the supreme controller of chess. So, going back to the position, the rook cannot move, and the knights cannot move, the king cannot move, as it would be a very bad choice, that's why Leela played rook to g7 out of frustration, protected by the knight, I didn't capture the rook, I played knight to g5, giving her another chance to protect the rook, many players might consider rook to g8, but it is a vulnerable move because I can capture the bishop first, after that, c4 will come, attacking the queen, as the queen moves back, e6 will come, and my knight and rook will create much pressure on black's position, after the pawn capture on e6, I will capture it back with my rook, as the king moves back, I will capture the knight, this is my positional idea, after the exchanges, I will have an open file, and your two pawns will be captured by my rook soon, leading to a win. So, going back to the position, we discovered that any rook move is not possible, after the king moves to f8, not capturing the bishops, we have c4, followed by a queen move, and e6 comes on the board, a very great move, attacking the pawn, the queen moves back, and I capture the bishop, consequently, e takes f7 threatens rook e6 check, which will lose the game, that's why Leela captures the pawn, and I capture the pawn again, creating an outside passed pawn, a few moves later, we have rook exchanges. We are just doing chess dances, rook to f4 comes on the board to exchange rooks, which happened in the game, in the end, she has two knights riding in the Atlantic, and I have a rook riding in the Pacific Ocean, 
A few moves later, my rook comes in, and my queen goes to g8, she tries to give some checks with her queen, but it is completely losing for her because she cannot defeat the god of chess. Queen to c6 comes on the board, capturing the pawn on a4 might look desirable, but it is a very bad move because after a queen check on h8, and the king moves, I will capture the knight, sacrificing the queen, but you cannot capture my queen back because your own knight is pinned, so, going back to the position, we discovered that the pawn cannot be captured, after the queen move and the queen check happens. I am pushing the pawn on a5, a few moves later, my queen goes to g2, paralyzing the black king, threatening queen h3, which is what I played in the game, I played f4, delivering the final blow, I win your queen, and at the same time, I promote my pawn to a new queen, in the end, I checkmate with my queen, that was a very nasty and romantic chess game at the same time, I hope you enjoyed the game very much, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, bye bye, take care, see you soon.